cut again yes sir sir am i audible sir yeah 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 you're audible i want what time show 2 o'clock yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir mk yes sir you can start good afternoon to one and all hearty welcome to the day 2 session 3 on implantable antennas i am elated to introduce our guest speaker dr ashok kumar srinivasan professor and head of r&d center department of electronics and communication engineering jyotish medi institute of technology and science hyderabad he did this be in electronics and communication engineering and completed me in applied electronics in anna university and then he did this phd in electronics engineering specialized in implantable antennas pondicherry university he has 12 years of teaching and research experience in the field of antennas rf and microwave he has authored for 16 book chapters and 103 sci and scopus index journals and conference papers recently he received Three Modrops Lab funding, approximately thirty-five lakhs from AICTE in the academic year twenty nineteen to twenty twenty-two. Also, he is the principal investigator of UGC JNTUH TEQIP three funder project, about two point five lakhs from July twenty nineteen to December twenty twenty. He also recently received travel grant from uh, DST. Malaysia in 2015 travel grant from CSIR China in 2017 and also from AICTE Malaysia 2019 his current research interest includes implantable antennas biotelemetry and telemedicine application he is a member in professional bodies such as IEEE IETE IEI and also a senior member in URSI he is also he is also on the editorial board member of many SCI and Scopus index journal such as ICT Express and Discomed publications he is potential reviewer for IEEE trans on antennas and propagation and various other journals he is top 1% reviewer in around the world based on publons record his team received class A award from e yantra robotic competition conducted by IIT bombay he visited many countries like malaysia singapore and china in connection with various academic assignments successful people build each other up they motivate inspire and push each other our speaker dr ashok kumar srinivasan is one among them now i request dr ashok kumar to uh, take over this session thank you sir thank you for your nice introduction about myself very good afternoon to all i would like to thank organizing team for giving that better opportunity to share my research idea in front of among research peoples today we are going to discuss about implantable antennas for biomedical applications implantable antennas many people come to know about that implanted teeth so when we are we don't have the teeth we are going to implant by surgery right similar way we are going to do design our antennas 
for implantable cases for biomedical applications. Coming the slides, we will discuss about that. What is that implantable antennas? Where we are going to use? Everything we will follow in that following slides. So from that figure, without my guide, Dr. T. Shanmugananda, I am not here. So I would like to thank my guide for guiding that my PhD work as well as guiding my entire my life up to my life end. I will be follow my guide words. Without my guide, I am not here. I would like to thank my guide to give a very good opportunity to do PhD in the field of implantable antennas for biomedical applications. Before going to our topic, we need to know about that microwave magic in kitchen room. Many people come to know about that uh, chicken 65, chicken uh, leg peas and fish curries. Just I am giving that examples to you to know about that. What are the magic seeds available from the microwave uh, signals? Here, from that uh, chicken 65, maybe you know about that, what is the concept of chicken 65? The 65th day of the chicken, it has to come to outside, and then the 65th day, we are going to ma make cooking, we are going to make fry. So that will be tasty compared to that other chickens. What is the reason? On 65th day, the dietary constant will be vary that uh, 65th day the dietary constant will be very very tasty that is the reason uh, we are calling that uh, chicken 65 it may be very tasty similar way that uh, chicken leg piece the leg piece it's having that more muscle content the muscle tissues the muscle tissues it's having that high dietary constant based on that high dietary constant it will it making tasty why means we are frying with the help of that heat energy that heat energy also we are going to use for that microwave oven and um, induction so whatever it may be the heat energy it will uh, it, it may be used operate in that frequency of 2.45 gigahertz with the help of that frequency and these muscle tissues the both the things it will be combining together and the food item it will be tasty similar way that fish curry also it's having that more muscle tissues and it is having the different taste compared to that to chicken so why because it is having the different dietary constant so based on the dietary constant Based on the dielectric constant, the microwave, it plays a major role in our kitchen room. Not only that non-vegetarian side, the vegetarian side also it's having that, it plays that major role for microwave magics. So whatever that vegetarian item you are going to um, heat, uh, for example, that cauliflower, mushroom, whatever it may be, you are going to taste that food, it will be very tasty. What is the reason? It is having that more dielectric constant. So based on that uh, concepts, so everything it is totally based on that dielectric constant. Without dielectric constants, we cannot be able to live. In each and every material, it's having different dielectric constant. So now we can go and start our session. Our implantable antennas contains biomedical applications, introduction of implantable antennas, operating frequency bands for implantable antennas, motivational examples for implantable antennas, and what are the methodology we are going to use to design implantable antennas? I am giving one separate uh, example research work for implantable antennas to design how we are going to use what is that what are the characteristics we need to concentrate everything we can discuss in that following contents. Biomedical applications in recent research activities these are all the some of the applications were used in biomedical field the glucose monitoring, retinal prosthesis, cardiophases, blood pressure monitoring and temperature measurements. So these kind of biomedical applications were used for in that biotelemetry systems. The biotelemetry systems can provide wireless communication between that inside the body to outside it, outside the body to inside it, whatever that communication we are going to transfer vice versa. And uh, some of the human being parameters like temperature measurements, heart rate measurements, muscle rate measurements, retinal measurements, brainwave measurements. So these kind of measurements signals we can get it from our human body and it, it, it can be transferred from human body to responsible person at the hospital. For this purpose we are going to use for that biotelemetry systems. Biotelemetry systems. That biotelemetry systems we are going to design. We, can, we are going to use uh, two variety of devices like sensors and antennas. So in 10 years before so many people, so many researchers they have used for that sensors. From 2011 onwards, we have started to design antennas for biomedical applications. The implantable antennas for using biomedical therapy and 
treating tumors for various psychological parameters. So we are going to use for our implantable antennas for biomedical applications to treat um, tumors and we are going to remove the tumors. For that purpose also we can use and then we are using that X-rays. X-ray also it's having that frequency. So with the help of that RF and microwave signal we are going to uh, use for our biomedical applications. And in order to build wireless communication links between the implantable devices, that means the implantable device can be inserted into human body from that implantable devices into exterior instruments. Outside that uh, device, we are going to communicate between the two devices. With the help of the two communications, we are going to get the signal from human body. So what are the things it is required? The implantable antennas needs low complexity. The complexity will be very less and small size. We need to consider about that size of the antenna will be very very small and low power consumption we need to give very less power to that antenna then only it won't radiate our it won't much more affect on our human body it will be that very less radiation why because it has to be implant to human body so low power consumption here the frequency bands are available for to use for that implantable antennas the MICS band frequency, mix band frequency and ISM band frequency, most popular uh, uh, frequency bands we are going to use for that biomedical applications. So many researchers they have used for mix band frequency, medical implant communication service band frequency. It is operating that frequency range between that 402 to 405 megahertz. That 402 to 405 megahertz is having that very less bandwidth. Also this frequency band it will be useful to radiate very short distance communication. So the MICS band, the medical uh, implant communication service band, the most popular researchers they are used for this frequency band and they are using that external device to get signal from the human body and then it will be transmitted to the uh, doctors. For the purpose we need to use one more external device to collect that signal from human body. For in ISM band frequency, it's operating in the frequency range between that 433 MHz, 915 MHz, 2.45 GHz and 5.8 GHz. Among these four uh, frequency bands, the 433 MHz is also similar to the mixed band frequency bandwidth because it is also very less bandwidth. So we can use that same external device for to send that information from human body to hospital. For 915 MHz, it is look like a GSM 900 model uh, frequency and 2.45 GHz, it is look like GSM 1800 model frequency. Mm. Um, it is audible. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Yes, okay. Sir. okay. So, in ISM band frequency, 433 MHz, 915 MHz, 2.45 GHz, and 5.8 GHz. The 433 MHz, it is almost, it's having that very less bandwidth. It is also going to be used for the short distance communication. And 915 MHz, it is look like we are going to use for the GSM 900 model. The GSM 900 model and the GSM 1800 model, we are going to use for the 915 MHz and 2.44 GHz. So if you are going to use these two frequency bands, we can transmit our signal from um, human body to long distance communications. And 5.8 GHz also, we come to know about the wireless land and Wi-Fi max, wi frequency and Wi-Max frequency. So whatever the applications we are going to use for that 5.8 GHz, we can implement. It will be long distance communication. So uh, better we are going to move for mixed band frequency to ISM band frequency. What is that uh, main reason means uh, we, we can improve our distance communications. The earlier case they have used for short distance communication. So uh, after um, started our research work we are going to concentrate on that long distance communication with the help of that 2.45 gigahertz ISM band frequency. In our research work, in our proposed implantable antennas, we have used for 2.45 GHz. Some of the antennas we have designed with the help of 915 MHz. So we come to know about the frequency bands here. You can see here the licensed version. What are the frequency bands it is available for? Free mode, freely available to use that frequency band. The worldwide available uh, case, it is categorized in the table. You can check it out. The mix band frequency, MICS band, medical implant communication service band frequency, it is operating the frequency range 402 to 405 MHz. It is uh, freely accessible for worldwide communication. So we can use this frequency band for biomedical applications. But that uh, transmitted power level is it's having uh, that uh, negative. It is maybe low because of short range communication. That is the reason we are going to categorize it as short distance communication. And ISM band frequency we are going to use for the 2.4 GHz. That means here 
2400 megahertz to 2483 megahertz it will be there so this frequency band it is worldwide uh, freely accessible frequency band also it is having the transmitter power is maximum level similar way that 5.8 gigahertz so these two frequency bands uh, having that maximum power transfer level and then uh, the license also it will be free for entire that worldwide communication so we can use these two frequency bands among these two frequency bands in our uh, research work we have used for 2.4 gigahertz so when we are going to design our implantable antennas we need to concentrate on that uh, steps what are the things we need to concentrate to design implantable antennas first thing is for biocompatibility biocompatibility means we need to select biocompatible material the substrates whenever we are going to design that implantable ant antennas we need to use substrates like fr4 roger uh, rt duride so many substrates will be there so similar way we need to concentrate on biocompatible material for to use to implant our antenna into inside the body so we need to concentrate on that biocompatibility the biocompatibility materials are available in our market first one is the, one thing is B, pdms poly dimethyl siloxylene pdms substrate zirconium alumina ceramic substrate teflon substrates so this kind of uh, example substrates i'm giving to you though this kind of substrates we can use to design our implantable antennas it won't be a problem for our human body so when we are going to design the an antenna with the help of these kind of substrates it will be the biocompatible and it will be flexible mode for our implantable case then miniaturization the miniaturization means we need to design our antenna within the uh, centimeter range that means very low um, area coverage length width height so we need to concentrate on that the size of that antenna will be very less within the centimeter we need to design that our uh, antennas then only we can keep in that inside that human body it may be not as the problem for our human body and a restricted power incident the power uh, what we need to do now we need to uh, concentrate on that power consumption the low power consumption we need to give very less power to that antenna also it, it won't be problem for our human body we need to think about two way uh, concepts why because if you are giving that more power to the antenna again it will be the problem for our human body so we need to concentrate on to give that low power and communication link characteristics we need to check it out about whether the antenna it will be operating inside that human body and outside that body whether it will be uh, connecting or not the transmitter and receiver signal it will be connecting or not with the communication link characteristics we need to check then this is our motivational example why we are going for the implantable antennas some patients want to check up each and every day for the hospital in this case that implantable antennas inserted into human body the antenna will collect the, all the information from our human body and it will transmit the signal with the help of wireless lan or telephone connection or mobile phone connection to that responsible person in that hospital so in this case the patient can save that traveling time and transport charges in parallel the doctor can serve the several patients at a time so in these concepts the patients no need to go to the hospital to check up about that their pulse rate and alt rate whatever that measurements he wants to check up each and every day hospital in that case so instead of that one if you are uh, implanting that human antennas with the help of that antenna the signal automatically it will reach to the doctors doctor will give that information to patients so based on the tower concepts we have designed our implantable antennas for coma stage patients so in later slides i will explain about that coma stage applications and uh, this is it another example for the diagnostic information so when we are going to uh, see that our pulse rate and uh, temperature everything we can monitor if any kind of diagnostic information we want to transfer from our human body to hospital we can use that uh, this electronically wearing watch and this is that our uh, motivational picture motivational example to uh, use that our implantable antennas for biomedical applications the without using that medical instruments we can measure heart rate measurements and temperature measurements with the help of that implantable antennas uh, for example if you are going for the hospital the doctor uh, directly will test with that uh, stethoscope and uh, thermometer right so no need to use that kind of equipment to know about that our heart rate and temperature measurements we, with the help of that uh, antennas we can measure our 
uh, these measurements and then the doctor can directly see that is having that this pulse rate and the temperature whatever it may be you can get it from that antennas so based on this motivation we are going to design our implantable antennas for biomedical applications in this case our proposed antenna it is categorized into around uh, four steps here what are the things we are going to concentrate to uh, do that our research work it is totally based on uh, chemical side the first part body simulating fluid it is totally based on that chemistry laboratory and the second thing is collect collection of pore tissue we are going to collect that animal tissues and then third thing is uh, we are going to prepare that human body pantom pantoms so the preparation of pantoms and the fourth one we are going to concentrate on to design our implant antennas the first concept body simulating fluid the body simulating fluid means it is equivalent for our blood liquid. It is equivalent for blood liquid. The blood liquid means it's having the pH level is 7.2. pH level 7.2. So we need to prepare that blood liquid. Why we are going to prepare that blood liquid means the uh, what is my concept means I'm going to design the antenna. That antenna going to be test inside that human body, inside that animal body. So we cannot be able to take that uh, human and animals to that uh, measurement device, microwave measurement device setup laboratory. So I'm going to take that part of tissues and then I'm going to uh, test our antenna into that inside the tissues. So that is my proposed idea. For that purpose, I'm going to prepare that uh, liquid, um, blood liquid. From with the help of that blood liquid, I'm going to store our uh, animal tissues and the pantoms in that uh, blood liquid. So it will be live up to six months and then within that period, I need to take measurement. That is my main concept. For the purpose, I'm going to uh, prepare here simulation flood. The body simulating flood, it is equivalent for blood liquid. The blood liquid is having that pH level is 7.2. That same 7.2 level, I'm going to prepare for body simulating flood. With the help of that uh, following uh, chemicals with appropriate content level, we need to mix, we need to prepare either 1 liter or 2 liter body simulating flood. So finally, I got it here, the preparation of body simulating flood. The first figure, the without HCl, adding that uh, HCl hydrochloric acid. So body simulating flood was prepared, but it is not uh, matching that pH level. The pH level 7.2, it is not having. So slowly I'm going to use um, to adding that uh, hydrochloric acid in that chemical laboratory and I'm going to each and every drops I'm checking about that pH level so up to getting that 7.2 I'm going to stop that uh, adding the pH uh, HCl acid in that body simulating flood so the second figure it shows uh, body simulating flood with the pH level of 7.2 so now this liquid is equivalent to our blood liquid if we are going to store any kind of um, tissues or whatever that living items we are going to put on that this water definitely it will be live minimum three months to six months so i prepared that body simulating flood now we are going to collect that our animal tissues in 2011 the research which started from the 2011 in 2012 and 13 we don't have that any kind of ethical committee to do that these activities now it is banned we need to get that permission from ethical committee to do this kind of research work uh, to test our implantable antennas with the help of that animal tissues means we need to get ethical committee clearance. So it is uh, understanding for whoever uh, uh, listening that to these concepts. So you need to understand about that ethical clearance committee is important to get permission to test our antennas or whatever it may be from animal tissues and human, t human tissues. So we have collected that leg tissue. We have taken that leg tissue of that pork tissue, pork, and then it has to be stored in that body simulating flood. The body simulating flood, the second figure it shows the live uh, tissue. It will be live within that uh, flood. Here, we are going to take that measurement of the directory constant measurements. In the earlier case, uh, based on that earlier research, one of our uh, co-researcher from US country, uh, that author did the dielectric constant measurement of pork tissue. It shows that um, 48.5 in 2.45 gigahertz. So same thing, I need to verify whether it will be correct or wrong, whether uh, her work it is correct or we are uh, we are getting that same value or not. We need to check it out about that other's work, other's activity and then results. So we have tested with that pork tissue with the dielectric constant measurements that uh, we have me tested with that uh, frequency ranges 2.45 gigahertz. So 
because we have selected the tires and frequency 2.45 gigahertz. The 2.45 gigahertz, that core tissue, it shows that the permitted level is 48.5. We got it. And the conductivity value, it shows 2.06. It is also matching. So whatever that earlier literature we have taken from that um, in US, US patents, so same values, we got it from that with the public pork tissues. So once if you are getting this kind of motivation and uh, uh, resulted output, so the further step, I'm going to test our antenna into that pork tissues. So the next step, we are going to prepare our human pantoms. Normally, we know very well about that human pantoms. Human pantom means whatever that um, our human body it is having for five age children, 10 age children, 20 age teenage people and 30 age male body, female body, 40 age people, 50 age people. So we can, it will be varying based on that age factors. The dietary constant is varying for that five age children, 10 age children and 20 age people, 30 age people. Each and every age factor, the dietary constant will be varying. So the one unique, uh, relationship between that ourself and um, pork tissue, both are in same. For 40 age people, whoever will be there, male or female body, that uh, pantom it will be equivalent for uh, pork tissue dietary constant. Whatever the pork tissue dietary constant, it will be there. Now we have seen 48.5 for muscle tissue. Same 48.5, it will be get, we will get it from that 40 age male body. We will get it. It is that uh, the research we did with the help of. Uh, study in each and every age factor for what is the dietary constant for uh, age factor peoples. So we have studied and collected the information. The 40 age male body people is equivalent for that our pork tissue, pork animal. So if you are going to test with that pork tissue, definitely we can take it to consider about the same similar result. We will get it from that 40 age human body. So that is the reason we have selected pork tissue, pork animal we have selected. So now we are going to prepare that our human pantom, that human pantom it is having that the first layer in our body, you can imagine about that um, uh, uh, our uh, hand or leg or whatever it, you know, chest or wrist, wherever, wherever the place you can imagine, the first layer is skin, the first layer is skin and the second layer will be in that fat. Then third layer, it will be in that muscle tissues. This is the order of that uh, uh, layer. It is present in our human body. The first thing is the skin, fat, muscle tissues. That is skin, uh, what is the thickness it is having? You can imagine about that the thickness of that skin layer. If you are uh, having any kind of accident or any place, so some skin only, it will be coming out, right? So if you are imagine about that thickness, it may be in that uh, 2 mm or 3 mm or 4 mm, in terms of mm. It, it doesn't have that centimeter, right? It is having that in terms of millimeter. So 4 mm. If uh, the 40 age people, I'm giving that example for 40 age people. 40 age people, it's having, he's having that 4 mm thickness of skin tissue. Similar way, that fat tissue, it's having that 2 mm or 3 mm or 4 mm. You can imagine, you can which part you are considering. Based on the part, the fat tissue will be in uh, high. Some of the part, there is no fat tissue, very less, 1 mm, 2 mm, it will be there. So based on that uh, area, it will be varying. So skin tissue, fat tissue and muscle tissue. The muscle tissue, it's having that more number of thickness. Why? Because it's having everywhere, the with help of that muscle tissue only, our body will be there, having that weight. We are having that 40, age, 40 kg, 50 kg, 70 kg. Everything we are having with the help of that muscle tissues only. So the muscle tissue thickness will be very, very high compared to skin and fat tissues. So with the help of uh, this model, you can see that ingredients, that ingredients we are going to use to develop our skin pantom, scalp pantom, and then muscle tissue, muscle tissue, everything we can prepare with the help of that, the ingredients. The deionized water, sugar, agarose. If you are going to mix to each other, we will get it skin pantom. The skin pantom the directory constant is 38. Similar way that uh, three layer model will be there. The three layer pantom model, right? Three layer, skin layer, muscle tissue, fat tissue. That the skin layer we are going to use with help of that uh, deionized water, sugar and agarose. If you are using these three chemicals, ingredients, we can get it skin tissue, right? Skin pantom we will get it. Similar way that uh, uh, muscle tissues. 
in that muscle tissues we are going to get it and then in fat tissue so once if you are going to use that a floor floor you will get it that fat tissue okay so now uh, in our proposed method we are going to de- we are going to prepare that phantoms as three layer phantom three layer phantom one is for skin fat muscle another one is for skin uh, tissue these two things we have prepared for that uh, phantom model so one is for three layer model see now yes so human body phantom we are going to prepare that skin fat muscle tissues we are going to prepare that content appropriate content level for 50% is for dna is water and 50% is for that sugar if you are going to mix these two things we will get it skin phantom and fat we are going to use this percentage of content to mix to each other definitely we will get it to fat tissue and muscle tissues okay no you can see now this picture it shows that phantoms male body female body and uh, age factor both based on the age factors so this phantom it will be this phantom it will show that equivalent dielectric constant for that our uh, skin tissue 3.8 38.38 and muscle tissues 52 and fat tissue 28 like that it will be equivalent for based on the age factor this is that uh, uh, concepts to prepare that human body phantom liquid without this phantom we cannot able to measure our uh, implantable antennas so we, either you can buy this kind of phantoms or you can prepare this kind of phantom liquid so in the previous slide it is for phantoms the human phantoms so it will be that uh, live dielectric constant will be placed here the equivalent dielectric constant placed here and a similar way this kind of liquid the human phantom liquid also it will be that having that same dielectric constant so we have prepared here the liquid phantom liquid for three layer module and single layer phantom liquid the three layer sing- uh, phantom liquid we have prepared with help of that skin fat muscle tissues and a single layer phantom we have prepared only it is based on that skin layer only single layer, skin layer right then uh, once we have prepared that phantoms already we have collected we have prepared that body simulating fluid and collected that animal tissues and prepared that phantoms also so now it is a time to design our antennas and uh, this antenna is going to be fabricated and that antenna going to be test with help of this phantom and animal body to test know about whether the antenna is working or not first we need to check it out after that only we need to go ahead with that to implement uh, implement our concepts right so what are the factors we need to concentrate to design our antennas in normally in, in antennas antennas it's having the different type of antennas so if you are going to use that antenna um, first thing is uh, so many people you have studied about that uh, dipole antenna yagyu antenna parabolic antenna everything you have studied right so similar way here just i want to show that uh, pictures to you because easily you can understand about the concepts right here you can see now the pic- antenna models so so many antennas i am having here so you can see here the antennas uh, different type of antennas it will be available so we are, either we are going for to design antennas with help of microchip feed or cpw feed nemo antennas pifo antennas fractal based so many types it will be there based on our applications for in biomedical applications we have designed the antenna with help of cpw feed technique the cpw feed technique means coplanar waveguide feed coplanar waveguide feed right the coplanar waveguide feed what is the coplanar waveguide feed why we are going for that coplanar waveguide feed why we are not uh, selecting that other uh, feeding technology to design the antenna so every question it has to comes to our mind so what we need to do that microchip patch antenna it's having that both right radiations for example you can see this antenna uh, one side it's having that conductor the back side also it is having that conductor so for both side for both side it's having that conductor 
so the radiation it will be occur in that both side so in cpw fit antenna it is having that only one direction it's having only one direction one one layer having that both uh, conductor and ground it plays in that uh, the conductor and the ground it plays in that single layer only single side only the back side there is no conductor so for the purpose we are going to use for that cpw what is the major advantage it will be available for cpw means the top layer it's having that both um, conductor and ground plane so partially it is radiating with help of substrate and with air medium so there is no uh, ground radiation very less ground radiation that means the back radiation will be less and also the cpw fit technique it's having that uh, impedance matching level is very high compared to micro strip patch antennas so that is the reason we are going to select here cpw fit technique the most popular fit technique in the air environments is called cpw fit antennas and very less implantable antennas are designed with help of cpw fit in that last few years so we are going to select our cpw antennas it's having that very less dispersion loss conductor loss and radiation loss compared to micro strip patch antennas and pfi antennas mm, then some more features it's having that uh, micro uh, cpw feed antennas it means it's having that wider bandwidth wider bandwidth means broader bandwidth so better impedance matching the impedance matching level already you know about that uh, impedance matching of our Uh, antenna carrier six fifty ohm impedance matching. So the fifty ohm impedance matching it will be we are getting from that CPW feed antenna compared to micro strip patch antenna and PFI antenna. And easy integration with active and passive devices. What is the easy integration with active and passive devices? Means we are going to interconnect the devices like diodes, resistor, capacitor, inductor. Everything we can interconnect with that our antenna to increase our gain and bandwidth purpose. We can use. Uh, so this concept is MMIC circuits. We are going to integrate with the help of MMIC circuits. It is uh, it, it will be better results we are getting from that CPW feed antennas compared to micro strip and PFI antennas. So in our case, we are going to use for um, design of implantable antennas. The first step we are going to use simulator. So now four procedure we have completed now. What are what are the things we have completed now? We have prepared that body simulating fluid, and second things we have collected that animal uh, animal tissues, and the third one we have uh, we have prepared that body simulating fluid, and that is sorry, human point phantom phantom liquid we have prepared, and fourth we have selected which type of antenna we are going to design. So these four steps it is now completed. Now we are going to design our first antenna with the help of simulation side. After that, we, are, we can go for that fabrication, then measurement. Finally, we are going to test with that antenna with the help of that uh, animal tissues and human phantom liquid. So this is our target. Once if it is working with that antenna, we need to go ahead with that publication and uh, patents. This is our actual concept, right? Now we are going to design our antenna with the help of IE3D simulator, HFSS, CST. ads fico so many softwares it will be available so we can we can use any one software i am not uh, focusing on only that ie 3d so we can use any kind of simulation software so either ie 3d hfss cst for biomedical applications better you can go ahead with that cst simulation software why that cst simulation software directly it is having that human head model human phantom male body female body based on the th factor they are having their phantoms so you can directly you can insert your antenna which part which uh, dimension you want to insert your antenna into that inside that phantom directly you can insert and then do that simulation you will get that result uh, or otherwise if you are going to select that i3d simulator you need to use here look like layers you see now that the simulation set of model it is available in the screen so first layer is skin layer in our human body if you are taking that example for hand the first layer is skin and then fat then muscle tissues so in between that fat and muscle we are going to insert our antenna what will be that responsible so we are going to test about our antenna how it is radiating what is it is the return loss impedance matching everything we need to concentrate on this figure this is our simulation setup we are going to design our implantable antenna with the help of this structure only okay right
now the flow chart the design procedure the design process the antenna design process it is totally based on this flow chart you can check it out that first step we are going to select our substrate antenna substrate which substrate you are going to use to design our implantable antennas the substrate is very important poly d metal silex lane pd ms r teflon or zirconia or alumina ceramic substrate which substrate you are going to use so we need to select one substrate now first then after that we are going to find our design which design we are going to uh, use for example square patch antenna rectangular patch antenna circular patch antenna or uh, fractal antenna or mimo antenna whatever that may be the shape structure patch you need to concentrate to uh, design your concepts here so once if you are selected substrate and uh, you finalize your uh, design then go ahead with it simulation software so simulation software you are going to design your antenna structure once if you are designing the antenna structure uh, you need to verify your result whether it is coming for the 2.45 gigahertz it is coming or not you need to check it out if it is not coming means you need to do that optimization because of for example microchip patch and running used to design the antennas and then after that you need to do optimization with the help of the optimization you need to get your um, result for 2.45 gigahertz frequency once if you are getting the 2.45 gigahertz frequency directly you can go to the next step to do fabrication the fabrication uh, you can do look like a pcb board fabrication the same methodology you can use if you are having that cutting machine in your laboratory you can go ahead with that pcb board fabrication as it same step you need to follow and then you will get it that fabricated antennas if you are having cutting machine if you don't have the cutting machine means directly please you can go to uh, do fabrication with the help of that some industries the industries are available to do that antenna fabrication with a very less cost so better you can go to that industries to do that fabrication step so they will do within a day they will complete okay so once if you are getting that fabricated antenna next step you need to go to check whether your antenna it is working or not whether it is working in that particular frequency or not you need to check it out so that is measurement case if it is not uh, you are not getting that simulation result and measurement results are same you need to go ahead with that again you need to do that optimization go to that starting procedure again you need to do that uh, design the antenna then you need to change the steps again you need to come for the fabrication again you need to do fabrication so keep on you need to do in the earlier case during that last 10 years before we, have, we need to design one antenna to test and um, uh, take that measurement it will take minimum one month to two months because of we don't have that measurement facility to, to test that antenna but nowadays we can uh, today we are going to simulate that antenna tomorrow we can do that fabrication within two days we come to know about whether that antenna is working or not we can uh, finalize our antenna yes it is working we can use that uh, is antenna for these applications we can close this matter for this uh, nowadays but earlier case it is not like that because of the measurement facilities are lagging from the education institutions nowadays there are they are having that very very much of uh, institutions they are having that measurement facilities in each and every state each and every cities so many institutions they are having that measurement facilities so with the help of this flow chart we can design our implantable antennas and uh, testing the procedures now we can we can discuss one uh, antenna antenna for biomedical applications how to design the antenna and how we are going to check the antenna results how to design, uh, check our antenna results so based on the results whether we need to go for the implementation purpose or not we can check it out so this is the structure i am showing here crossed bow tie antenna the crossed bow tie antenna is having the dimensions 22 cross 26 mm the 22 is our length 26 is our width okay thickness of the antenna is 1.6 mm thickness we are used here and uh, this is for uh, cpw feed antenna so central layer whatever that uh, central patch it will be there now in that center case it is that conductor and uh, it is having that gap between that conductor and ground this side the left side and right side it is totally based on is it ground so on single layer single layer it's having both positive and negative 
and the uh, the back side there is no conductor there is no ground so on top layer itself both conductor and the ground it is present here so the radiation signal it will be radiating towards in the forward directions so the back radiation it will be very very low compared to microstrip patch antennas so based on that concepts we have selected here cpw feed antenna the cpw feed antenna we have selected here crossed bow tie antenna the crossed bow tie antenna having that unique feature to give that broader bandwidth and high gain that is our main motivation to use for this crossed bow tie antenna now in that our research work totally it is totally based on that uh, simulation and analysis part and measurement part the simulation part we have designed we have selected the antenna we have uh, we have drawn that our antenna the antenna going to be simulate with help of simulator either i3d simulator or hf simulator or csc simulator or fico and ads whatever it may be you can use that any one simulator okay next step we are going to once if you are getting that result we are happy about that result we need to go ahead with that another parallel work parallel work to validate that simulation work whether we are we got that simulation work whether, whether it is correct or wrong we need to check it out with help of analysis method that analysis method also uh, trial and error we need to do that to keep on do that uh, trial why because uh, we don't know what is the steps we are going to put on the uh, equation method so here from this structure i am going to segment it has five segments that five segments with help of the term uh discontinuities the cpw discontinuities with help of the discontinuities concepts i have segmented here five segments and then that five segments can be categorized here i am going to redraw that uh, antenna structure in terms of transmission line model equations as shown in this figure here so that each figure it's having that the combination of t type network and pi type network so that l and c values we don't know that value of that l and c but l and c formulas we know that with help of that formula we are going to calculate that l and c value with use of frequency f equal to 2.45 gigahertz if you are using that f value easily we can find out that l and c value with help of t type network and the pi type network l and c equations so once if you are uh, calculating that l and c value i am getting this equation here finally i got it input impedance that input impedance here you can see now uh, this structure input impedance once i i know that l and c value i am going to simplify that structure simplifying that structure finally i am going to finally i am going to calculate input impedance once if i am going to calculate the input impedance easily i can calculate reflection coefficient k value so already we know that formula it is reference formula we can take from that our textbook john de cross reflection coefficient gamma or k equal to z in minus z not divided by z in plus z not that z not is characteristic impedance of our antenna the characteristic impedance of z not equal to 50 ohm impedance then input impedance what are the impedance you are calculating here you can substitute here so if you are substituting that input impedance in this formula you will get it a reflection coefficient the reflection coefficient value you can you can calculate a reflection coefficient with help of the reflection coefficient you can find out vsw value and the return loss value the vsw value it is lies between that 1 and 2 the your antenna is radiating perfectly good the return loss value you are getting here minus 10 db and lower value definite uh, we can assure about our antenna it is radiating uh, very good radiation in that particular operating frequency so based on these concepts we need to finalize about our return loss value if you are getting here uh, minus minus uh, for example return loss value for 2.45 gigahertz you got that the same uh, output for simulation and uh, analysis part means you need to use for uh, frequency starts from 0 to 3 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz you need to do with help of matlab equations you need to write a program for this equation in that matlab and you need to start that uh, frequency level from 1 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz then you need to plot that graph what is it uh, 1 gigahertz what is it 1.21 gigahertz 1.2 gigahertz like that up to 3 gigahertz you can plot the your graph with help of matlab so finally i'm plotting that graph here both simulation and analysis part the simulation and analysis part it is matching in that uh, frequency range is 2.45 gigahertz so it is varying slightly varying that values but 
it is uh, matching that 2.45 GHz frequency. So in the 2.45 GHz, it shows that the lower return loss value above minus 20 dB, 20 dB, right? So the minus 10 dB is the reference level of our um, uh, antenna red characteristics. So we need to concentrate on that the signal it is uh, having that lower value of minus 10 dB means we need to consider. So here it shows minus 23, 25 dB at 2.45 GHz means definitely it will be acceptable uh, radiation. No. So that another flow chart to do that here analysis method. How to do that analysis method means when we are going to design our antenna, that antenna design we are going to segment in that different parts, segments. One part, two part, three part, three, four, four segment, five segment, six segment, based on our wish. With help of the discontinuities, we need to redraw that uh, transmission line equations. Once if you are going to once if you are um, drawing the transmission line equation, we need to find out that input impedance. If you are made any mistake in that uh, drawing that transmission line model, definitely it will be the problem. You cannot able to get that input impedance. So you need to concentrate on this discontinuities formula to draw that transmission line equations. Then you need to calculate the input impedance. And then with the help of the input impedance, you need to calculate the S parameter. Once your analysis of S parameter and the simulation S parameter is matching, so you can go ahead with that same work. Or otherwise, again, you need to go and uh, do that, redraw that transmission line equation model. Again, you need to calculate the input impedance. Again, you need to calculate the S parameter. Again, you need to check. This process, you need to uh, compose it, you need to rotate up to getting that equal result, it matching that simulation and analysis result. Right. So with the help of that MATLAB, we are going to see about that, how that current distribution is occurred on that, our uh, bow antennas. So you see now here, that boundary level. So what are that boundary level you are going to concentrate to make that segmentation. For that purpose, that first figure you can categorize. And that second figure, it shows that the contour region, that the current distribution, how occurred on that structure. So where, where which place it's having that maximum current distribution and the current distribution level, so we can see in that contour region. And the antenna radiation plot, so it is having that forward region. From that figure itself, we can easily understand about that. The antenna, it is radiating towards forward radiation, right? And the fourth figure, it is having that cross-section view of that uh, your radiation view in 3D view. So this structure, earlier we have seen in that uh, antenna structure, that antenna structure is fabricated with the help of the aluminum ceramic substrate and it is fabricated here, fabricated here and the SMA connector is connected, SMA connector is connected here with the help of the soldering and this antenna is going to be test. This antenna is going to be test with the help of vector network analyzer. The vector network analyzer means what? Uh, it is look like a smith chart. Whatever that uh, smith chart, it is going to be find out that input impedance and uh, standing wave ratio, SWR, VSWR, everything we can calculate with the help of the smith chart. That a smith chart work, it will do here, that vector network analyzer. The vector network analyzer, with the help of the vector network analyzer, we are going to test that our antenna impedance matching whether that antenna it is matching that impedance or not the 50 ohm impedance matching first we need to check it out 50 ohm impedance matching once if it is uh, assured it is we are getting that uh, 35 ohms to 60 ohms if you are getting within that range so the cpw feed antennas uh, the impedance matching level range is 35 ohm to 60 ohms 65 ohms so within this range if you are getting that result so your antenna is radiating good your, your antenna is radiating good no doubt so we need to concentrate on that impedance matching, first thing. Once if it is matching that impedance, then we need to go to measure our return loss value. The return loss value, it has to be like, uh, it has to be lower value of minus 10 dB level. So, and then VSWR, VSWR value, it has to be like, uh, lies between that 1 and 2. If you are getting these results, directly you can go to test your antenna with the help of that radiation pattern measurements with the chamber uh, setup. Okay, then gain measurements. So, if you are uh, not uh, having that impedance matching, then you need to go for that again design, simulation work. Then, then again do that fabrication. Again you come to that measurement. Without matching that antenna, that impedance level, 
no need to go ahead with that other measurements it is a waste of your time so it won't be useful to implement any kind of applications so better you need to get impedance matching if you are not getting impedance matching again you need to go to that simulation to do that optimization and then you need to get uh, low error value minus 25 db and minus 30 db means uh, here in measurement you will get it minus 20 minus 15 like that so what do you need to think now you need to concentrate on that accurate impedance matching you need to get from the simulation automatically you will get that in measurement case definitely you will get it that uh, impedance level matching so with the help of this measurement setup we can measure impedance matching and s parameter value vsw value either one you can calculate either vsw or s parameter value you can calculate then this is the setup to test our antenna with the help of here the three layer module so we have testing our antenna with uh, phantom model phantom liquid the three layer phantom liquid we are testing whether our antenna is working or not here in this figure we are testing our antenna for dielectric constant measurement the pore tissue the pore tissue whatever the pore tissue we have collected from that pore and it is stored in the body simulating fluid so from that uh, tissue we are testing our antenna and that is a pore tissue dielectric constant measurements the dielectric constant and then we are going to test our antenna into inside that uh, pore tissue about what is that whether uh, the antenna is working or not inside that pore tissue so we need to test what is the gain of that antenna so whether it is reaching that positive gain or negative gain what is the level of that gain we need to test everything why because uh, inside that body inside that skin definitely it will be having that negative gain only why because the dielectric constant of that muscle tissue is high so the radiation it won't occur on that much more things we cannot able to get a positive gain from that inside that muscle tissue so we need to test and then we need to concentrate on that gain value and skin uh, skin layer and the three layer mo module so based on these three measurements we need to conclude our uh, concepts so we are going to test and then we got it the output with the help of the output we need to finalize about our results what are the results we got it from uh, microwave measurement setup you see now that the return loss characteristics it shows here 2.45 gigahertz so all these three graphs it shows green color uh, red color and a dotted line it shows here 2.45 gigahertz it is covering covering right so it is having that more than minus 10 db lower return loss value also that vsw value it is lies between that 1 and 2 for um, simulation and measurement results so definitely it will be matching that our impedance by impedance value so now we can go ahead with that radio um, radiation pattern the radiation pattern for crossed about a antenna it shows that maximum radiation in that e plane and h plane t h plane uh, wave propagation so it's having that cross polarization and co polarization how we are going to consider cross polarization and how we are going to consider that uh, co polarization what is that uh, idea to know about that uh, co polarization and cross polarization or e plane and h plane we need, we need to know about that e plane concept, concept and h plane concept so you can you can imagine about that e plane t that e plane t just i want to show that figure here uh, in that third figure you can uh, see that here anke chamber measurements that anke chamber measurements that third figure you can take this example here the antenna is placed on the tunnel chamber the antenna is rotating the antenna is rotating from the antenna is rotating from uh, vertical side the vertical rotation it is that e plane we are going to get that uh, e plane radiation and when the antenna is going to be rotated in that horizontal side horizontal 0 to 360 degree so we are going to get that h plane t if from that case co polarization and cross polarization will occur so the radiation pattern we, with the help of the radiation pattern itself we will get that gain value so what is the gain of our proposed antenna it's having that minus 5 dba in that simulation side with the phantom in, with the inside that phantom we are getting that minus 5 dba gain without phantom we are getting the positive gain so the antenna it is radiating good uh, without phantom in air medium it's showing that a very good uh, gain value so with the phantom it is having that minus 5 dba only in uh, up to 15 dba up to minus 15 dba it is acceptable range for that gain value 
<coughs> so we we need to consider we need, we can uh, consider about that our gain value is is acceptable range only so we can proceed to go ahead with that fabrication and do that measurements so we did that um, fabricated and the measurement so the measurement also we did now earlier we have seen here microwave measurements now that the comparison results of both simulation and measurements you can see now here the simulation side minus 23 db we got it that return loss and the measurements we got it minus 23 minus 26 db and we is the bear value also it is maybe within that um, range one one is to two ratio and impedance band width we got it that 23% and 24% that the gain value is shows that the simulator side minus 5 db and the measurement side minus 6.5 db that efficiency we are going to get here very less because of it is negative radiation these are all the some of that um, uh, antennas we have proposed and we have designed for implantable antennas uh, for biomedical applications in different different frequencies so in all the antennas we have designed for ism band frequencies 915 megahertz and 2.445 gigahertz these two frequency bands we have designed variety of antennas around 30 to 40 de designs we have designed and uh, all the antennas we have tested with help of that microwave measurement laboratory uh, with help of qsat cochin university science and technology um, ernakulam so with the help of that microwave laboratory we have tested with the implantable antennas and microwave measurements once we come to know about that uh, the antenna is working so we are planning to go ahead with that filing the patent and publications so we have did very good publication with the help of these implantable antennas around 35 papers in sci and scopus journals free journals we have published and 70 plus international conferences itbi and springer conferences we have presented and five more patents we have filed for that based on this idea and four funded projects we got it with the help of these act, uh, these activities only so all these credits everything it is comes under that this research work only and uh, this is the picture we are going to show here that a microwave measurement setup for three layer module and a single layer module that means sing, three layer tissue and a single layer tissue and uh, radiation wave uh, radio uh, radiation pattern measurement with help of honeycap chamber measurements so without this setup we cannot able to measure we cannot able to validate our antennas so this is our another uh, recently we have did with the, uh, with hcl technologies companies for measurement setup this paper also published in uh, motl microwave optical technology letters and uh, one more antenna we have designed for textile antenna so earlier uh, to do that implantable antennas for biomedical applications it is required for ethical committee clearance for textile antenna it is uh, no need to require because we are going to place on body on body communications for that purpose we are going to use our shirt pant tie button whatever it may be that wearable devices will be there with help of that wearable devices we can design our antenna and we can use for that same biomedical applications or wearable applications for example military applications monitoring applications so wherever we can go we can use so for the purpose we have designed that our jeans cloth material the vtu the logo antenna we have designed that logo antenna is tested with help of that vector network analyzer in qsat cochin university of science and technology and it has to be published in that microwave optical technology letters publications sc index journals and uh, this is that uh, real time example for uh, measurement of on body applications that on body applications on t-shirt and uh, jerkin is having that antenna with help of uh, that antenna we are going to test our setup so we are going to measure that antenna terasix in on body conditions in on body conditions so with help of this figure you can easily understand about that first figure it shows that vector network analyzer to measure that impedance matching and uh, s parameter measurements and uh, second figure it shows that phantoms phantom measurement and the third figure it shows that anechoic chamber measurements for radiation patent the radiation pattern the round table it will be rotate from 0 degree to 360 degree and uh, it will be rotate and based on the rotation you will get it that signal what is it uh, maximum gain for that which which angle whether 0 degree 10 degree 20 degree 30 degree 40 degree like that uh, we can calculate that and at 0 to 360 degree we can calculate that gain values that radiation pattern value right 
So based on this idea, I plan to conclude our session. If you are having any queries about the implantable antennas, please raise your queries. You can put on your question in the chat box or you can raise your queries by uh, unmute yourself. By conclusion, so we have taken one, some, some of the examples uh, for only limited examples only we have taken for that year. Uh, different type of antennas designed for implantable case. The first antenna, dual V-shaped antenna, we have taken length, width, height, 600 mm cube. And finally, we have come to conclude our implantable case antenna, ZUT monopole antenna, with 38.675 mm cube, length, width, height. So this antenna, the ZUT monopole antenna is less than 1 cm size. So we have achieved our size reduction. And we have achieved our biocompatible material. And we have achieved our uh, antenna is having that high gain antenna. So compared to that other implantable antennas, they are having that minus 14 dBA and minus 15 dBA gain. But in our proposed antenna only we are showing here minus 6 dBA gain, minus 7 dBA gain. Mm, then here, then based on this conclusion we have achieved our size reduction and biocompatibility and high gain. That uh, one of our professor asked about how to measure the SAR value. In SAR value, we can measure with the help of that radiation pattern measurement, with the help of that uh, spectrum analyzer setup. It is available from that NK chamber measurement room, so we can measure from that setup. And these are some of the references. In India, we don't have that facilities. In India, we don't have that facility. Whatever the facility we are having, uh, we are, uh, many people we are having in that queue to get that measurement setups. So similar way, this picture also it shows, in uh, 10 years before, we are having that facilities. One single place, either QSAT or IIT Bombay or IIC Bangalore, whatever it may be. Within that one place, the entire Indian nation, people has to go and get that measurement and get that idea, output, everything. It is very tough to get that output. So we did like that only in that research work. But nowadays it's having that each and every place we're having that research facilities. So maybe you're having that very good chance to do that very good research work in this current scenario. And earlier case, whatever it is maybe happen with this structure. Just I'm giving that idea to you. Whatever that problem we have faced in that 10 years before, 20 years before to do the PhD and do that good research work in our Indian country. So this is advice for everyone who are having that uh, superpower you can use before marriage. Definitely you will, you will achieve a lot of publications, patents and funded projects. Why? Because no need to lose your powers. With that energetic age, young age, definitely you can do a lot of active works. Okay? Thanks for your patience. I will conclude my session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us in spite of your busy schedule. We've learned a lot through the session. Thank you once again, sir. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Ashok. Thank you very much. The session is very interesting. Any questions? Sir? Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, I was asking about SAR specific absorption ratio. Uh, yes, ma'am. Specific absorption like rate we can measure uh, in that anchor chamber measurements only, ma'am, in that uh, spectrum analyzer. Why? Because in that uh, our yes, measurement sir. side, in uh, simulation software, it is available in that option, ma'am. In HFS software, if you are using means, with the help of the software itself, we can get it. But you want to get measurement in sectors, definitely you need to go ahead with the anchor chamber measurements. Sir, have you measured your antennas, sir? Yeah, for yes, SAR? ma'am. I have measured the SAR value, well, ma'am. Uh, the maximum level is 1.6 watts, but in our antennas, it shows 1.06 watts. Oh. For which material did you achieve that, sir? Uh, ma'am, for uh, PDMS substrate, one substrate, ma'am. Another one is for alumina ceramic substrate, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Participants? Kindly fill the feedback form given in the chat box. Our next session is at 4 p.m. on stress management by Dr. S. Rajendra. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.
थैंक यू सर और नेक्स्ट सेशन एट थ्री फोर्टी फाइव हेलो